The year is 50 BC. Gaul is entirely occupied by the Romans. Well, not entirely. One small village of indomitable Gauls still holds out against the invaders. Let's meet some of the villagers. I'm Asterix, the hero of these adventures. My name is Cacophonix. I make beautiful music. I'm Vital Statistics. I'm the chief. My name is Obelix. I eat boar for breakfast. I'm Getafix. I brew the magic potion. The sun is rising over Asterix's village as usual. The scene is one of peace and serenity. Disturbed despite the fact that day is dawning by the snores of the only Gaulish rooster who has adenoids. It's cockcrow, you goose. Time to talk turkey. Hey, you're in a foul mood this morning. <laughs> Come on, get up. It's going to be a lovely day. <sighs> I had such a funny dream last night, Asterix. I dreamt the storks visited our village, bringing the babies people had ordered. And one of them left a baby here, by mistake. Don't say you still believe storks deliver babies. Why not? I deliver many years, don't I? One of these days you and I must have a little talk, Obelix. <coughs> it, it can't be true. This must be some kind of joke. <coughs> Obelix! What is it? Guess! Dogs do deliver babies, and they made a mistake. <laughs> Obelix, you're getting me down. Help me calm this baby down instead. <laughs> Maybe he's hungry. Oh dear, I finished up the last boar yesterday evening. <laughs> I've an idea babies drink milk. Oh, I know where to get milk. What's all that yelling? Is Carcophonix the Bard practicing? Uh, no, no, it's just a stork who delivered to the wrong hut. Eh? I borrowed Bucolix's cow in exchange for a men here, Asterix. Huh? Well, never mind all that now. Milk the cow and let's get it over with. Psst. Psst. 
Come on. Hurry up. Psst. Yes, well, I can see you know as much about cows as storks. Hold this baby and I'll do it. He's wet through. And whose fault is that? Soon after. I've milked the cow. Now find something to use as a bottle while I change him. Look, I swapped a shop-soiled men here for a good with a teat. Teat for tat, eh? <laughs> you feed him while I summon the village council. But I don't know how a baby feeds. Gaga. Never mind, he does. <laughs> I feel as if the whole world was watching me and laughing. Uh, I see a problem, Asterix. We must find out where the baby comes from and whose he is. It's urgent. I must just point out that foundlings are usually dumped on temple doorsteps or in public places. So that when a baby is rather pointedly left outside a bachelor warrior's hut, people are bound to think things. Things? What things? Hmm. Hmm. Hey, hang on, are you out of your minds? One might even think Mr. Asterix would have no trouble in finding that baby's mother. You don't mince your words, do you? Shut up or I'll make mincemeat of you! Calm down, we mustn't get upset. Asterix, come quick! That's Obelix calling me. Asterix! And it looked like being such a lovely day! Well, he takes Bucolix's cow for a rattle, Asterix! By two Tartis, I bet you went and made his bottle out of a good which was still half full of magic potion! Won't it be bad for him, get a fix? Don't worry. Obelix is living proof of the fact magic potion is harmless to babies. Though, maybe not to those in their vicinity. Caught a lot of bottle, eh? You want a smacked bottom. <laughs> I don't know what babies are coming to these days, Asterix. Here's your cow. A bit rattled, but okay. Huh? And next time she sees a baby, mind she doesn't look so like a toy. Rattling cows is bad for them. <laughs> Chief Vital Statistics, what am I going to do about this baby? Don't you think you've done enough already? And don't touch that child with your clumsy great hands. What he needs is a mother's tender care. Don't you, my little sweetie pie? Yes. You come on with me, and in future, I don't want you mixing with people whose effect on all around them is so devastating. But, but impedimenta, dear. <laughs> I think this baby has his head screwed on the right way. Well, that settles it, Asterix. Yeah. He's definitely picked you two for his adopted fathers. Asterix and Obelix, the guardianship of this child, with all its weighty responsibilities, is now yours. Take good care of him. I will now give you an ode on the joys of family life. You try it. He's gone to sleep. No bigger than a wild boar piglet. And he's as much trouble as making fifty men years. Who on earth can have been bold enough to abandon this baby? I told you, it must have been a stork. Shut up about storks or I shall do you an injury! Shh, you'll wake him up and then he'll want a cow to rattle. That's what comes of being fool enough to give him a bottle of milk with magic potion in it. Hark at Mr. Asterix, full of the milk of human kindness, aren't you? Who's a milksop then? Milksop yourself, it's your soppy fault!
Oh, really? You don't believe in bottling up a grievance, do you? You're enough to make me take to the bottle myself! <coughs> hmm? <coughs> there. What did I tell you? I think it's high time we went in search of that baby's parents. So a little later... Asterix, how are we going to recognise parents who won't even recognise their own child? We do have one clue. The baby's clothes and wrappings are made of embroidered linen. The sort of thing you'd expect to find in a rich Roman family. So we'll start by investigating the fortified Roman camps that surround the village. Oh, goody! I love investigating Roman camps. Dogmatics, you guard that baby while we're out. If anyone comes near him, eat them. Understand? Do you really think Dogmatics is up to it? Of course. He's had lots of experience. I've taught him to guard many years. Are they Gauls? I am Christmas Cactus, Prefect of Gaul, and I have come to investigate the whole of this conquered territory and take a census of the Gaulish villages. You've got one thing wrong, Roman. This village still holds out against the invaders. And we're the ones doing the investigating. We'll see about that. Ready, men, at the word. <laughs> this is a great start to our investigations, Asterix. Signa in ferry. Forward. Prige. March. Concasso. Charge. Ad gladios. To arms. Infestis pilis. Take aim. Dismount. Since we're making investigations, do you happen to know of any Romans who abandoned their baby outside Asterix's hut? <clears throat> Don't bother, Obelix. Anyone can see they're new to these parts. Let's go to Compendium. Well, now I know enough to go back to Condatum. Wren. Some new Roman reinforcements at last! What fun! <coughs> Hmm? That's Dogmatics barking. I hope the baby's all right. <coughs> How did he catch up with us so fast? He's still well tanked up with magic potion. Now what do we do, Asterix? Oh, take him with us. It'll simplify our investigations. <coughs> See how he made straight for me when he felt lonely. Yes, I expect he wanted to chew the fat. He's not chewing me. And anyway, what do you mean, fat? Uh, there's Compendium. This investigation calls for tact and delicacy. You know what to do, Obelix? Yes. We smash our way in, ask people to put their heads together, and do it for them if they won't. Raise the alarm! I do like your tact and delicacy, Asterix. I try not to be a crashing bore myself when I pay calls. <laughs> Here, what's the idea? We're investigating. Only passing through. Well, there's no call to make us pass out. Do you recognise this baby? I've recognised 14 babies waiting for me back in Rome, but I'm almost certain that that's not one of mine. Let's try the camp of Laudanum. But in the camps of Laudanum... ...and Totorum, the investigations get nowhere. So that's what they call an opinion poll? <gasps> well... Now for Aquarium, the last fortified Roman camp. Soon afterwards. We're trying to find out who abandoned this baby and making some investigations. Your methods are certainly striking. I know someone who may be able to help you. 
We had a visit from a prefect this morning. He's going around taking a census of all the local Gauls. We know that! So? So, that's just a pretext. The prefect told me his real job was to look for a baby. It might well be this one. Quick, Obelix. We must find that prefect again. Roman camps are like pockets. You never find what you're after till you get to the last one. If so many resources are being deployed to find him, that baby must belong to a powerful family. That's what makes him so strong. Nothing to do with a potion, eh, my boy? Yeah. Careful! I hear voices. And the prefect said not to worry. Taking a census is dead easy, he said. Easy and safe. All you have to know is how to count, he said. Yeah, count your bruises. Well, he can't count on me anymore. Quo derat demonstandum. Shut up and keep limping. <gasps> the the Gauls! Calm down, Romans. Just take us to your leader, Prefect Cactus. We want to talk to him. Stay here and be good, OK? Yeah. He cast us aside like an old digitabulum. Roman glove. And he went off to Condatum in a hurry. Oh, oh, this must be the baby Christmas Cactus is like, you know, looking for. If I take him a child, he'll make me sort of optio, you know, and cover me like with gold. So who's counting on the results of this census? Not Caesar anyway, he's busy with the troubles in Upper Germania. I'll seize my chance while they're all like talking. <laughs> Huh? Oh, look, he wants to rattle a Roman now. Help! G -g -g <laughs> you know, we two have a lot in common. Yeah. Run for it! Big girls have little girls upon their backs to buy them! All us and little girls have lesser girls. That's so ad infinitum. Shut up and keep going! Meanwhile, at Condatum, in the residence of the Prefect of Armorica. Quick, send a messenger off to Rome. Uh, don't bother, Cactus. Brutus! That's right. I've come from Rome specially to hear the latest about our little affair. Judging by your slovenly appearance, contact with the local barbarians is bad for you. Contact with their fists is. This investigation you wanted made is a risky business. Have you found the baby? Yes, I have. He's in a little village on the north coast, but guarded by two fierce Gauls who flattened an entire infantry section. Hmm, Caesar's often told me about that village of crazy but indomitable Gauls who get their strength from drinking magic potion. But I'll have that baby even if I have to put all Gaul to fire and the sword. Luckily, some way off. Come on, son. Try your legs out. Yeah? Look, Asterix. He knows his home already. Yeah. Just like me at his age. I wonder if we're setting that child a good example. Later. Well, the door's repaired, the baby's asleep, and Dogmatics is on guard. So let's go and discuss the situation with Chief Vital Statistics. Oh, I've got to deliver a men here to Bucolics first. Menhirs have a long shelf life. Can't it wait? No, it can't. I always make sure my menhirs are shifted before the sell-by date. So the Romans know the baby is here, and this fake census of theirs suggests that their intentions aren't entirely honourable. But we still don't know why someone chose our village as the place to leave the baby. I think I know why. The baby must need protection from the Romans, and our village is the one safe place where Romans would never dare to come. Asterix, since I'm going to see Bucolics anyway, would you like me to pick up another cow for the little lad? Obelix, my boy, I wish to goodness you'd take your men here off when you come indoors. But, Chief, men here's are high fashion indoors as well as out. 
Too high for my door by half, you idiot! He gets funny moods, does vital statistics. It's not my fault if his door isn't up to my menus. I've brought this menu to pay for the hire of your cow, Bucolix. Why, there'll be somebody wants to ask you, Obelix. What were you a doing of with she? She be proper code, she nubber to see her, Bobby, now, and she do be climbing trees. Look, how about a regular milk run? You deliver milk by the bucket, unpackaged, same as I deliver menus. Uh, where shall I put this one? I'll have it in that there field, along of t'others. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, what do you use your menu collection for? I don't use that for note. They do say as the land hereabouts ain't no good for growing out but stones, so I might as well see if that be an old wives' tale. A similar experiment was then going on at Stonehenge. Soon after, I think it might be wiser for one of us to stay at home and babysit when we have to go out in future, Obelix. Oh yes, which one? Well, in a word, you. Words fail me. Why not you? Because my tact and delicacy are better than yours when it comes to looking for that baby's parents. And that's my last word. Oh, my word! Dogmatics and the baby have gone! Quick, we must go and look for them. I call it disgraceful. Naughty little boys like that ought to be kept indoors. Well, the fact is, we did... I don't get it. I simply sneezed, I, I, I opened my eyes, and look. We'll have to find him before he gets a fist in every door in the village. I've spotted him! He's at Getterfixer's door. Come in. Is something up, Asterix? Yes. The effect of the magic potion. It's worn off the baby at last. Now for some peace and quiet. <laughs> but in Condatum. So, now you know the dreadful secret of that child's birth, Cactus. And you also know the equally dreadful secret of my plan. If you betray me, it will be the worst for you. What? Me betray you? Do I look like a traitor? Yes, but I have no choice. So if you'll serve me well, you'll get that seat in the Roman Senate you've been wanting so long. I'd sell my mother and father to serve you, if I hadn't done that already. Oh, Brutus, son of Caesar. Only adopted son of Caesar. And all I'm asking you to do is bring me that baby. I have an idea. <coughs> Asterix, suppose I gave him just one tiny drop of magic potion. Maybe he'd... You do no such thing! You two have created enough havoc already! All right, all right, I get the idea. Mustn't treat this place like home, must we, Dogmatics? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh? Hey, he's left me holding the baby. Oh, very clever, Mr. Obelix. Uh -huh. Come on, Obelix, don't be silly. Where are you going? Home, aren't we, Dogmatics? But, you know, my home is yours. No, no, it's your home, and I know when I'm not wanted, so let's forget it. Look, I'm sorry, I'm rather edgy at the moment, but I do need your help, Obelix. Well, the baby was left in your care, wasn't he? So, he's your problem! <laughs> oh, I see. I get the idea. All you want is an excuse to wriggle out of it. You know what you are? Huh. A big, fat coward! Say that again if you dare! You bet your life I will! No, no, children. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? Quarrelling like that? Two friends, brothers in arms. Sorry, Oblix. 
I wasn't thinking what I was saying. Oh, that's all right. It was my fault. Uh, listen, Asterix, am I really fat? No, of course not. Just well covered. That's all. You're fathead. I mean, you're big silly. Oh, Druid, we must do something. We're Gaulish warriors. We've no idea how to bring up a baby. The trouble is, you and Obelix are the only people he'll have near him. But now the effects of the magic potion have worn off. Maybe we could hand him over to a nursemaid? It's worth a try. Anyway, he stopped crying. The worst is over. Or yet to come, I have a nasty kind of feeling. Oh, by two tarties, I thought so! He's gone again! He might get into trouble. We must find him. We only have to follow Dogmatics. <laughs> Luckily, Dogmatics is brighter than those storks. <laughs> it looks as if the babies in your house get a fix. <laughs> Asterix, the baby's fallen into the cauldron of magic potion. Oh no, that reminds me of something. There wasn't much potion left. But enough for the effects to last longer this time. You know, I really take to you. And to think I only feared the worst. Meanwhile, not far from the village. Oh, Marcus Junius Brutus, since we want our HQ near the indomitable Gauls, why don't we use one of the fortified camps surrounding their village? Because Caesar might get to hear of it, and I'm none too keen to have him asking me what I'm doing here in Armorica. Halt! We will pitch camp here! And once again we are privileged to watch the manoeuvres of the Roman army, while the sappers dig a fossa, ditch, and raise an agar rampart. The woodcutters go to chop down trees. For the carpenters to build the vallum, fence. At last the camp is ready. The general and his men are about to enter in review order thus symbolizing the might of the Roman army, the best disciplined fighting force in the world. Mm. Although sometimes... What's that? My tent. I can't stand the way the others snore in bed. Here's Odoriferous, the legionary I mentioned, O Brutus. How did you know we were looking for a baby, Odoriferous? I sort of like heard the prefect mention it to the Centurion Aquarium, O oh, General, and I like, you know, nearly brought you the baby back. So what stopped you? Well, he did. He sort of took me for a rattle, you know, and then he like swung me around over his head, O oh, General. Your man seemed to have had a knock on the caput. Roman head. But he's not quite kaput, and he may yet be useful. Well, if this baby likes playing with rattles, you can take him some, Odoriferous. Disguise yourself as a Gaulish peddler, and infiltrate the village of the indomitable Gauls, then you can easily snatch the baby and bring him back to us. If you agree and succeed, you'll get to be Optio. And if I like say no, you know? Then you'll like get to be dinner for the lions in the circus, you know. Later. Didn't you read the notice? No peddlers or circulars in this camp. The disguise is perfect. It's even taken in the century. And to think I like joined up because of the smart uniform. Later still. Just outside Asterix's village. Get out! No peddlers or circulars in this village. Look, or, I mean, look, mate. I don't like want to sort of bother anyone. You know, I'm only selling babies rattles. Did you say rattles? That's different. Go on in and see Asterix. He'll be glad to buy at least one. 
You'll find his house easily. It's the one with the door bashed in. Is this Asterix's house? No, it's farther on. Uh, is this Asterix's house? No, it's farther on. Is Asterix's house farther on? No, this is it. Who are you? And what do you want, stranger? My name is Aromatics, and I'm like sort of um, a peddler, you know? And I was told you could do with a rattle. If it'll keep him quiet, I'll buy your whole stock. Wah! Kiddies, like, love my rattles, you know? Watch this. Who'd like one of Uncle Aromatics's nice rattles, then? Help! Save me! <laughs> Good guy. So what? He just prefers the peddler of the rattles to the rattles of the peddler, that's all. You know, rattling peddlers isn't very nice. Yeah. I'm terribly sorry. Well, that's okay. I, I sort of love kiddies, you know? We still have to solve the problem. If only we could take him out hunting boars with us. But he might come home and thump all the village animals. You must get around the countryside a lot, Aromatics. Maybe you know a nursemaid who'd be brave and strong enough to come and look after this baby. Sure, but if you're not sort of busy, why don't I look after him myself for a while, just to help out, you know? You think we ought to take the risk, Oblix? It's the peddler who'd be taking a risk. Well, fine. But mind he doesn't get out of the hut. We'll be back quite soon. We're only going to pick off two or three boars in the forest for supper this evening. I think that peddler's a rattling good sort to amuse the baby, don't you, Asterix? Yeah. I wonder if, like, the lions in the circus might have sort of been a better bet. Later. He's asleep at last. Now to get him back to the camp before he wakes up. G oh. oh no, not again! That does it. I give up. Help! He's after me! Mummy! Mummy! Hmm? Help! Help! Halt! Who goes there? I told you, no peddlers or circulars. In this car! Stop him! Stop him! Protect me! Odoriferous, come down, and that's an order. No! No! I'd rather, like, go to the circus! I hardly had time to spot your little friend, but he was after the peddler, and the peddler was in such a state, his hair, beard and moustache had all dropped out. Quick, Obelix, we must find that baby. Dogmatics is already on his scent. <laughs> Keep our boars on ice for us, Photogenics, we won't be long. That peddler was no more a ghoul than I'm a Roman. He came to kidnap the baby. <laughs> it's a funny thing, the Romans being so keen to get hold of that child. Yes, it's as I always thought. What is? These Romans are crazy. He is, Obelix. Togmatics has found the baby. Did you think he wouldn't? <laughs> He's fast asleep. We mustn't wake him. I think he's digesting the peddler. <laughs> For the last time, Odoriferous, come down or I'll chop the tent pole down instead. Promise me that little monster isn't in the camp. I knew that man was up the pole. Now drink this pick-me-up and tell us what happened, Odoriferous. I, like, sort of won the girl's confidence, you know, and they gave me the baby to look after. I was going to carry him off while they were out, 
that, that little monster has like superhuman strength, you know? And whenever he sees me, he sort of goes into the same routine. He takes me for a rattle and... Here we go again. Even the Gaulish villagers are having trouble with him. Asterix himself asked if I knew a nursemaid brave and strong enough to look after him. Did he really? I think I've, like, earned promotion to Optio. You? You failed in your mission! Think yourself lucky not to be served up for the lions in the Circus Maximus! I didn't, like, know these parts before, but I won't be sort of forgetting the discovery of Armorica in a hurry. What you said about the nursemaid gave me an idea. Why don't we send one to the village? Because we haven't got any nursemaids in the army, that's why. Yes, we have. You. What do you mean, me? Think, Cactus, that lunatic of yours was well and truly put through it by the Gauls. We must remain the only ones in the secret. And if you really want that seat in the Senate... Well... Promise me no one will get to know, anyway. Later. Are they gorgeous? Like a bit of slap and tickle? <laughs> Boy, Zubida, that's going a bit too far. It works. Even the sensory was taken in. <whistles> Hello, gorgeous. Like a bit of slap and tickle? No, I would not. How about your sister, then? Rather crude, but what a voice by Bellinos. Who on earth is that? You can tell she's not from this village. She should watch her weight. What terrible taste in clothes. What's she after here? <coughs> Excuse me, ladies. Could you tell me where to find the warrior Asterix? Is repairing the door of his hut over there. You can't miss him. A small man with a yellow moustache. But perhaps you two have met already. Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> Thanks. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you Asterix? Yes. Why? <clears throat> My name is Espedistra, and I heard you were looking for a nurse. I'm a very experienced nursemaid. Hmm? But you're not one of our villagers. How did you know I was looking for a nurse? No, oh, these things get around the legion. I mean the region. Especially when it's something to do with the bold and famous warrior Asterix. Mm -hmm. How about me? Do they know about me in the region? Can I really be speaking to Obelix, the handsome and seductive men here delivery man? However did you guess? And did you also hear that the child in question is, um, rather a handful? No, oh, I've thumped, uh, that is to say, I've brought up worse handfuls, I'm sure. We can always try. Go on then, but don't say I didn't warn you. Funny. I have a feeling I've seen her face somewhere before. Maybe she's no more a nurse than that man was a peddler. What do you think of her, Obelix? A woman of taste and discernment. Woman of taste or not, we'd better watch out. I did warn you. He's impossible. No, I'm not rattled. I got off to a flying start. I'll get the better of you yet, you <laughs> child. Ten to one on the baby. You done? It's no use trying to tame that little monster, my dear. Mind your own business. I think the nurse's voice is breaking. But I was only going Keep to... Keep out of this! Get back to your pots and pans, woman! Fancy speaking to the chief's wife like that! 
You see, the trouble is, the baby drank some magic potion left at the bottom of a cauldron. I'll have earned my seat in the Senate. Come on, I'll try getting you off to less of a flying start. Look, the nicest Aspidistra in the world. Mustn't hit nice Aspidistra? <coughs> Here we go again. Goodbye, goodbye. Wipe the tear, baby dear, from your eye. Huh? Don't cry, don't say. The baby seems to like it. I can't say I share his taste. There's a silver lining in the sky, more than an sort of thing. That's amazing. Aspidistra's got him off to sleep. Cheerio, Chin Chin. Well, she certainly wins the nursery stakes. Funny sort of lullaby, though, if you ask me. Na poo toodle goodbye. I call it disgraceful! What's the matter, Cacophonix? You've brought someone in from outside to sing. I call for equity. But you're not a nurse, are you? I'm a bard! And only bards have the right to sing! Now you've gone and woken him up! Can't you go and shout somewhere else? Madam! I do not take orders from any strange nursemaids! And I'll shout here if I... What? Help! Save me! He doesn't even care for Cacophonix's speaking voice. Under the Latana by the Castra gate. Castra is the Latin for barracks. A lily on the land on a light, my own lily Malena. I don't think she's much better than Cacophonix. Barbarians, you're all barbarians. Look, you can tell the baby doesn't like you much. A little later. He's dropped off again. It's all right. You can leave him to me now. Just one thing. How do you come to know these soldiers' songs? You, um, a child minder's job doesn't pay much, so I took to minding a Roman army canteen, too. There are ways and means of moonlighting, and that's mine. And that way, I got to be a mine of information on the army. Oh, won't I just have earned my seat in the Senate? <coughs> well, you're needed as a child minder now. Oh, 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 it's a lovely bell. Come on, Obelix, let's find somewhere quieter. Oh, good work, Vital Statistics. Marvellous, I call it. What? What have I gone and done now? You're chief of this village. You let a woman from outside come and live under a bachelor's roof. Oh, that's great. But... Pedimenta, dear, she's only a nurse for the baby. Exactly. Such promiscuity. Shocking. I'm not enjoying this adventure very much, Obelix. Oh, it'll be all right. It's sure to end with a banquet under the starry sky. Same as usual. I'd like a private word with you, Asterix. Hmm? About that nurse living under your roof. Tongues are beginning to wag. Could you go and stay somewhere else for the time being? I couldn't care less about village gossip. But I'll do as you suggest, Vital Statistics, just to oblige you. What are you doing? Moving out. If you need me, I'll be at Obelix's place. Ha <laughs> ha, the fools left the coast clear for me. Now I can easily make off with the baby at dead of night. To be honest, I'll be rather glad to stay with Obelix just now. And that night... Now's my moment. Everyone's asleep, including him. <coughs> it was upstairs, then they called it all. Roman Army Cookhouse and a very unhappy solstice to you, too. Put a sock in it, will ya? Only bards have the right to sing. Call that singing? 
Will somebody make that woman shut up? There, there, Pedimenta. Foiled. <coughs> Next morning. <coughs> oh, I will have earned that seat in the Senate, and no mistake. But for the effects of that wretched potion, I tuck him under my arm and make off with him now. <coughs> Come to think of it, how do I know the potion's still working on you? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Everything okay? Uh, sort of. Are the effects of that magic potion going to last much longer? That depends. Judging my obelix, they could last forever. And so, a little later... Well, I'm not going to stick around in this rotten village forever, wearing these rotten clothes and playing this rotten part. Too bad. I'll risk it. Where are you going, gorgeous? Um, I'm going into the forest to pick mushrooms. <coughs> Pack up your troubles in your dolls. That's Latin for kit bag. And smile, smile, smile. Huh? So, now we're out of sight of the village. I'll make straight for the camp. Where are you going, Obelix? I'm delivering a menu to Bucolics. That baby has a good appetite. He's costing us many a menu. I'll come with you. I thought we'd be better off with a nurse. They usually provide the milk. But this one doesn't seem to. If you're looking for the baby and his nurse, they've gone into the forest to pick mushrooms. Huh? Mm -hmm. Quick, Obelix! I've got a nasty feeling. Keep my men here on ice, Photogenics. We shan't be very long. Oof. Phew. That was a weight off my mind. Yeah. My mind? Throwing your weight around, eh? Wait till I catch you, you... Help! Help! Save me! <laughs> no! Don't touch me! Leave me alone! Yeah. Mommy! A little later. <laughs> oh, look. Isn't he sweet? He's gone to sleep under the tree again. This proves Aspidistra's story of moonlighting in an army canteen was all moonshine. We've been fooled. Why don't we find out who she really was? I'd love to investigate a Roman camp again. We can't put the baby at risk. The Romans will be sure to think something else up. But this time by two, Tartis will be ready for them. Help! Help! Save me! Yes, by Jupiter, come to my... Don't be ridiculous, Cactus. I order you to come down. Promise me he isn't in the camp. Too bad. So, I won't get to be a senator. But don't anyone ever mention that monster to me again. Now, now, we've lost a battle. We haven't lost the war. I told you I'd put all gold to fire on the sword if necessary. So now let's light the fire! And at dusk. Fancy making us haul these Roman relics up just to shoot off a load of fiery arrows. Yeah, it's a flaming nuisance. Are you really going to put all Gaul to fire and sword, Brutus? Well, the village of those indomitable Gauls will do. I'm told the thatch on Gaulish huts burns fast and well. This time the Romans have turned out more cunning and persistent than usual. So we must take more care than usual. 
and gossip less too. You would keep a hold of nurse, and you found something worse. That night, several milia passuum from the village. A mille passus is one Roman mile. Get it, Cactus? I'm leaving you in command. When I give the signal, open fire. <laughs> The fiery arrow, the signal. Are you ready? Impedimenta, you take the women and children down to the beach while we deal with the Romans. I'll leave him in your care. I'm sure he'll be good. Everybody line up in silence and don't panic. No. No. <laughs> it seems to taste rather funny this time. I expect it got a bit burnt in the heat of the moment. The Romans are playing with fire. Now let's show them what we can cook up. Judge! Judge! Investigators first, isn't that right, Asterix? We outnumber them, and we shall not be moved! Meanwhile... We'll be quite safe here. Hand me that baby, my good woman! Come and get him if you dare. You don't scare us, Roman. We've had our portion of magic potion. We have. I didn't get any. Shut up. Oh no, he's getting away. Leave it to him, dear. That Roman's in for a surprise. So this is the terrible little monster. <coughs> Bye, Bellissima. The effects of the potion have worn off. <laughs> Out to the ship, fast! And soon... Do you swear there's no risk of those crazy calls turning up? They're far too busy just now. So they are. And at dawn... <laughs> <laughs> Look, Asterix, I've met the peddler again. And I've met the nurse. It's a good thing we outnumber them or we might have been moved. Now tell me what really brought you here or you'll have a few troubles of your own to pack up in your old Sarkina. Mercy, I was only obeying the orders of Caesar's son, Brutus. And where is Brutus? On the beach. He knew you'd send a baby to safety there. Quick, Obelix, follow me! Quick, Dog Matrix, follow us! <laughs> Where's the baby? Asterix, I have failed you. A Roman snatched him and took him on board a pirate ship. I can still see it on the horizon. Do you think you could swim out that far? You really do ask stupid questions sometimes, Asterix. Sorry, I was only thinking. Well, of course I can! I don't know what I'd do without you, Obelix. All sorts of silly things. So we've, uh, fixed the price then, Roman. Yes. But you don't get paid until we disembark at Private's Portus. Rest. I've a wife in every Portus, so that suits my private life. The lad must be worth a lot. Even more than you think. Shiver me timbers. If he's that valuable, I've a good mind to keep him for myself. Two swimmers on a wavelength! Huh? Two swimmers? Who are they? Go 
Bubbles, they're making waves, we're in deep water! Who? Huh? Surely you're not abandoning ship just because of two Gauls? You don't know us, you never set eyes on us, and now we're quits, Roman! Yoo-hoo! Come any closer, and it will be the worse for this baby! Ouch! Ow! And we didn't even see the pirates. Do they know what's up? Oh, I'm sure they're in the swim. Where do they swim? From Brynus Mortis. It'll be a long crawl. Try doing the breaststroke. Those galls are sickening. Sick ad nauseam. I'm feeling a bit seasick myself. Soon afterwards, I knew they'd bring the baby back all right. Hooray! Have you discovered the secret of the child's birth, Asterix? Not yet, but I have the key to the mystery. And just what is going on here? Caesar! Yes, Brutus. I have come straight from Upper Germania, where my spies told me what you were up to. Decimating my legions just to get hold of a baby. And who is this baby? Well, out with it. Just what I was going to ask him myself, Julius, old chap. That baby, oh Caesar, is your son. Cleopatra! Amazing! What a sight! And what a nose! My son? Caesarion? But I thought you were both safe in my palace in Rome. Did you say safe? After you left, the villainous Brutus made several attempts to do away with Caesarion, hoping to become sole heir to your property and your fortune. So I decided to send our son away to the one place where I could be sure he would be safe. The village of indomitable Gauls, which still holds out against the invaders. All right, I know. It too, Brute. You too, Brutus? Caesar sometimes repeated himself. You will leave immediately for Upper Germania. It has a nice bracing climate, and the barbarians there will teach you manners. Forgive me for taking advantage of you, Asterix. Oh, that's all right. I'm honoured by your faith in me, Queen Cleopatra. The... the baby's disappeared! <coughs> He's going to sleep under a tree again. He likes trees. Same as dogmatics. It's a good sign. Then I'll have solid gold trees made for him. Oh, Queen Cleopatra, and you too, uh, Caesar. We're sorry that we can't invite you to celebrate this happy event in our village, uh, but it's burnt to ashes. But this is the end, so what about the banquet? I promise you my engineering corps will rebuild your village. And I'll hold a banquet for you on board my galley. It's the least I can do. So there is a banquet after all, if not quite the sort Obelix expects. It is held under the sunny sky of Armorica, on board Queen Cleopatra's sumptuous galley. Everything else is the same as usual, including the roast boar, and Julius Caesar himself joins the party. For is he not the father of the young hero who lies there sound asleep, unaware that one day, under the name of Ptolemy the Sixteenth, he will rule Egypt. So, when the bees have collected their pollen, the pretty flowers all get married. See? Mm. And, and how about the stalks? 
Where do the storks come into it? The sun is the sun is rising over Asterix 